<clears throat> Yo. How's it going, everybody? Another beautiful day to play some magic. What I want to do today is mess around with a green ramp strategy, because every now and then these pop back into my life, and I just love to play magic with them. So what are we doing? We're generating lots of mana, casting big things. We've got Walking Ballista, we've got Jotty Offshoot, Death Cap, Duskwatch, Ruin in their wake, which some would say be reasonably reliable so far with what I have, which we'll get to in a second. Nissa, Trackers, Retreat to Kazandu. This is not a card that I love. This is a card I'm really lukey warmy about, but it does have this uh, bonus where in controlling matchups where you don't need the life gain, you can put counters on your mana dorks and make them into actual threats that do things. So, and in aggro matchups, you can just ignore them for the most part and cast things that are bigger than what they play with. So that's what that's what's up with that. We got Thought Not, From Beyond, Veggies. We've got Smasher and Basher. No, that's Nissa. Ulvenwald Hydra, Oblivion Sower, Ulamog, and Kozilek to do all kinds of big things to do it. Um, there are 14 forests, there are four wastes, there was one rogue's passage, and there are four evolving wilds. And uh, yeah, let's go find a game. Dun dun. Uh, Capu88, what is the best way to get started in magic duels? Is there a god way, I think you mean a good way, or deck to farm gold? Uh, the best way is to come up with some money so you can put something into it. It doesn't have to be all the money, but 20 bucks is a good start. Pick a set. Uh, probably Kaladesh has a lot of raw power. Origins has a lot of raw power. Probably pick one of those. Buy as much of that set as you can so that you can make some decks with some synergy. And um, that's the way to do it. Otherwise, I think you just have to do your daily quests against the AI. Or if you go on ladder, hope you get paired against other people who are trying to farm gold. That's very hard to do on Xbox. Easier to do on Steam and easier to do on um, iOS. <laughs> Let's back out and back back in. Usually it connects faster than that, so I smell trouble. Also, um, go to nogoblinsallowed.com from people who post things there about building good decks and doing things. And uh, that will really help out too. Hmm. <laughs> What a laggy day we're having today. Seems like every, I'm getting the lag message all the time. Nothing I can do about that. Is it lagging bad for anybody out there? Please let me know. I need to know if the video is garbage before I try to upload it later. <laughs> all right, we got a, a 36 rank on our tail. And let's see what happens. Yeah, that's a hard hand to argue too much with. If we draw veggies, we're just in the clear. So let's rock and roll. We will have to keep drawing lands or ramp spells. Fortunately, we're playing a deck that is built to do such things. Although we don't have Nissa's Pilgrimage. Which is the ultimate draw more lands spell. Hopefully we're playing against some kind of a control deck that will give us a lot of time to do the things we want to do. And the tracker is a pretty good draw. If it can survive, it can keep lands coming by making clues. It's good stuff. We can even play one end, make a clue next turn if our opponent's draw allows. And boom! Here comes Kithian. Uh, Demand jumps in. We need new cards already, CGB. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've done everything I want to do with the current card pool, but I don't know. Who knows? Maybe you're right. Um, normally I'd hold this back, but I think I want to get it on the battlefield. We do have cards that use the colorless mana in our deck. If he's playing white aggro, we're off to a great start, and he's not off to a great start, and that bodes well. And means that retreat to Kazandu next turn will really start to 
run up the score, as it were. Skyline Cascade, so we got blue and white. Uh, aren't new cards always right? Well, yeah, there's nothing better than new cards. There's no doubt about that, D-Man. There's, there's nothing better than new cards. I will not, I will not argue with you there. There's a waste. Uh, we can do this. Now, do we want life? We don't need life here. We need pumps. Uh, so let's put plus one, plus one counter over here. That takes it up to a three. Crack the clue takes it up to a four. Hmm. I guess I don't really want to expose my tracker though, right? You don't want to expose your tracker to um, reprisal effects. So I think the right target is the offshoot. Start making that an even more imposing blocker. It's going to cover the life gain and then we're going to make it bigger. Make another clue. I don't want to attack here. I could trade my tracker for its full board, but tracker's just got too much value and might be important for getting the lands that we need. So. Not looking to trade, just looking to stall. Another thing to consider with the counters for this is if you put them on a low cost uh, card like a Jotty Offshoot, that makes Reflector Maging it a lot less, um, just a lot less uh, appetizing, I suppose. Whereas if you put all your counters on the big and make the biggest thing you have, a Reflector Mage just shuts that right down. And, you know, thanks for coming. So he, he, he could get an attack there, he will not. Interesting. He'll tap down the offshoot without attacking. He'll play his flash spell, main phase. What does it mean? What does it mean? Could it mean something? I don't think so, <laughs> to be perfectly honest about that. Brutally honest, some might say. All right, um, let's keep working on our dorks. Keep making clues. And I'm going to crack this one. Well. Instant speed might come in handy. Hmm. Yeah, let's hold off on that. Let's crack this now. I don't even want to thin, because drawing more lands is kind of good for me. Actually, mm, we'll see. Uh, and there, I get more lands. I get what I ask for. And right as I'm thinking, eh, maybe it's not so good. I do have a lot. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can go to... Uh, he has six power. I can go up to five, and then six, with a clue and a wild's crack. And I take out his whole board with a three for one and I have two more clues on the battlefield. I think that's a fine... That trade's not bad, but I still don't think I need to do it. Uh, too bad doesn't offshoot, doesn't have flying or reach. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be tight. A re retreat to Kazandu plus the black vampire that drains opponent for your life gain. <laughs> Classic. Well, sadly I'm short of vampire, but it is... Uh, it is a uh, early duel's favorite. So our opponent has one other flying spirit, and they're going to bring out the Thunderclap. And that's their fourth creature. So now we have to care about the Militia Captain doing things. Let's crack this. Let's go grab Forest. Let's, um, now that we, they have a clock in the air, do I want to keep getting bigger? I guess so. I want to punk him out with Rogue's Passage at this point. Do I need the life gain, though? I might. Yeah, I'm going to start adding some more life gain to cushion this. The flyers aren't something I can easily stop. And let's draw. If we don't draw any substantial action, it might be time to start playing the Rogue's Passage tracker game. Whew! Flood is real. I think we've drawn like five lands in a row. Um, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I guess I try to draw here. He won't block this turn, so I don't even need to use the passage, because if he blocks... My god. <laughs> and just when I said that, more uh, land was good for me, but... Let's see here. I'm going to get another clue that I'm going to be able to crack. That would be eight. Eight is a three turn clock. I can't get any tighter. If I go up to nine, then I can kill him next turn. All right. If he doesn't block. If he does block this turn, he doesn't get to flip his captain, which is probably his best chance for success in the game. All right. In you go. 
does not block. That Land? <laughs> Almost. Close. Let's do it. And there we go. Oh, I didn't have a waste on the battlefield. Well, that's dense of me. Ah, warm-up game. That's a that's an epic fail on my part. Angel of Invention. Okay. Yep, you can definitely add to the punk count. I accept. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. you did your job, plant. <laughs> Land off the top for sure. Ah, okay. Um, plus one on you. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So that. Not being able to ramp that card last turn means that we can't uh, thought not, but whatever. Uh, for one white, I think it's in the bag. I swear this was one of the uh, lamer games one can play with this deck. <laughs> but, ta-da! Got there. Our opponent that playing that herald early was probably as tapping my uh, tracker down that turn would have done the job. Let's uh let's see if we can get a better better representation. Let's see if we can cast some Ulamogs on turn five or four or whatever you can do. <sighs> And here comes the dude with some neat arm jewelry. It's like got a cannon in the in his arm, and you know, very well manicured facial hair, if I can say so, without sounding awkward. <laughs> what do you think? Looks banty, maybe, maybe even teamer. Anyway, JJ is back. He is a one rank. His deck is a 60. Let's see what happens. Alright. Uh, five lands, a Duskwatch, and a Ballista. Pretty meh. Pretty meh. Isn't that condescending Chris Pratt? You mean that avatar? Is that what we've decided? That that's Chris Pratt? I guess so. <laughs> I can certainly, I can go with that. That doesn't bother me. So what we want to do is fetch, probably get another forest, because you really just need one waste, or maybe two when you get to the tip of the curve. And then um, what you want to do is, yeah, you, you need plenty of green sources, because there's lots of green to do, but not that much on the colorless side. It's rare that you need to cast more than one thing a turn. And Kozilek is double colorless, so that's the only reason to have two. But you do want to have one on turn one if you also have a green and a ruin in their wake. So in this case, we'll be fetching green because we have a waste in our hand. Yay! If we didn't have the waste in our hand, we'd fetch the waste anyway in case we draw a ruin in their wake. That's plenty and plenty and plenty of discussion about turn one. What's our opponent want to do with turn one? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? He's having a big old think about it. Now, normally, when my opponent holds for that long with one forest up, I assume that there is a fog involved. So let's keep that in mind. Nowadays, it could also mean a walking ballista, as that is a popular card. But I very much think that we could assume in a one rank that a fog could be held in this situation. Duskwatch to the battlefield, please. Paging Duskwatch to the battlefield. 
So what would our opponent like to play? Green and white aren't good removal colors, so when you see green and white, usually your creature sticks around, unless a declaration in stone or something of that nature happens. So we can bank on Duskwatch hanging out, and what we get is an ally, a core blade whirl. Hmm, interesting. How do we want to play our turn? We could flip our dust and search. I don't think that's really what I want to do, as I'm not going to do very much with the mana. I think for the turn, we could play Ballista for one and Evolving Wilds. We could play Offshoot and Ballista for one and an Untapped Land. I think what I want to do is play Offshoot and just fetch, because Ballista on one takes four more mana to get to Ballista on two, whereas Ballista on two just takes four mana up front. What we're probably going to do is Veggies and Ballista on three anyway. So... Let's bring forth the j Let's go ahead and play our lands here, and we'll set up more green. <laughs> Four fogs, 26 creatures, done. Yeah, that D-Man has that comment to make on the what our opponent might potentially be playing. And let's see what else they have. I'm guessing that renowned human thing, um, Castellian. That's what I'm gonna put my on Citadel Castellian. Instead, we get a Shrill Howler. So we are an ally werewolf deck. Flips into a Howling Chorus, which is a three-five. Whenever it deals combat damage, they get a three-two horror. That's not bad. Uh, and creatures with power less than the Howler can't block it, so I can't block the Howler with my creatures. Unfortunately for my opponent, a Walking Ballista can make short work of the Howler. Also, it takes mana to flip. I think it's six. Yeah, six. So we don't have to worry about it flipping anytime soon, soon, soon. Up, uh, up. Oh, pump fake. Pump faking with the, with the blade. If you are uh, in this situation and you want to attack me, you should attack with your Blade Whirl before you cast your creature spell, because I might be afraid of a pump spell like a wild size and not block. Otherwise, I'm very, very, very likely to block if you've tapped out and then you attack in such a way. All right. So I'm not in a hurry to kill this thing with my Ballista. Unless he puts an aura on it, which would be a weird change of events. But I really do want to get out my retreat to Kazandu and get that to work. Because when I play Ballista with retreat, like, yeah, pretty things happen. It's definitely one of the pluses to having retreat in the deck. So let's start here. And I think I'll put a plus one, plus one counter on my recruiter. That will make it big enough to block this creature and trade with this creature. So not that I want to do that, but if we discourage our opponent from attacking, that's good. And then next turn, next turn we either vegetate or get our Ballista down and put another counter on it. But I want to see what my opponent does. If they play one more creature, it's probably Ballista. And that's because if you can keep pace with the board, you should. So, opponent, what would you like to do now? <clears throat> hmm, having a good think about it and going with a Timberland Guide. So I'm guessing plus one, plus one counter on your Howler. Yep. So that's unblockable this turn. Let's see if our opponent wants to send it in. They do. Good choice. Also means Ballista will have to move a few more counters to get rid of that thing. Doo, 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 doo. And we untap, we draw a tracker. Ooh, I do love my tracker. Love my tracker. And I very much want it on the battlefield. Whew. This is tricky. So I don't think we're under enough pressure to panic, so I think so tracker trackers he's gotta be the play. Now plus one plus one counter. Let's Hmm. Hmm. 
I think I'll keep adding to the recruiter. I don't really want to trade with my recruiter. It's a card advantage engine, and we are we're only we're down to two cards in our hand, but maybe if I make it big enough it causes trouble. He could have reprisal, that's true. It does make you think about where to put a counter. But I think at this point that's what we want to do. Now do I want to attack? Or do I want to play around a celestial flare? I think we are just favored right now. I'm just gonna chill. I don't think I need to attack. We're gonna be the go big deck. We don't have to kill fast, necessarily. Of course that could all change with certain cards. Skyship would be one that would cause a bit of stress. Reclamation Sage, what are you going to target? The Retreat. Yeah, that's too bad. As it was doing God's work. Angelic Destiny would be reasonably poor for us, it's true. There's un so many cards in duels now that you can basically do the math and find a card for any situation. Luckily in this situation we're not under too much pressure. Let's get the Ballista out though with the uh, the idea that they could be uh, bringing a, they could bring an angelic destiny to this party, and a ballista on three pretty much shuts it down. A reality Smasher can wait another turn. That's no problem. Land. Tick-tock, what's it gonna be? Siegecraft! <laughs> Boom! Um, well, that's not Angelic Destiny, but we can act as if it were, as that creature will be hard to remove later. So, we're going to respond to the aura by putting two damage on the uh, core blade whirler over there which means it never gets the gets the bonus from siegecraft and now I don't think our opponent I mean they can attack with a 4-2 but I'd likely just take it and crack back much more aggressively so I don't think that's a good move okay and then let's see what we draw cultivator do we go for big mana or do we go for damage Big mana is more mana efficient. Damage is always so appealing when the opponent's tapped out, though, as there's not much they can do in response. But since we have a tracker, and our opponent might draw a way to remove it, let's go for big mana. Two life, two clues. Feeling good. Two mana for a cultivator. And what would be bad for us is called tragic arrogance, but you have to pick your battles. We can kind of put our opponent on a fog. I don't know what else to put them on. Here comes big flips. The problem is I can block it. Right? Yep, I can double block it. So he's going to flip and he's not going to uh, do anything else with it. And now we get to flip our recruiter. Oh boy. Oh yes. Yes. Cheaper smashers. We could have activated in response, but we have clues to crack and a walking ballista to pump, so I'm not worried about it. About finding uses for my mana. And speaking of that, let's crack one right now and see if we can find another thing. Probably should have done it before we played the Smasher, if, uh, if we're trying to play perfect. And now we have four mana. We can take out a blocker. He's got a 4-6 now, but we can threaten to kill it if it single blocks the Smasher. I think we can just send in our five powers. Uh, the only thing is I don't want to trade off the tracker, but we can double pump that if he blocks it with the 4-6. So now, 
not a lot of downside to getting super aggressive while our opponent's tapped out. If he blocks Tracker, we sack two clues and eat it. If he blocks something else, we add a counter to our Ballista for four mana and ping it. And I'm talking about his 4-6 creature, of course. I don't really care how he wants to block with the little dorks. He could double block, but that would probably just get as nasty. So, now what, opponent? Taking 15 is always, uh, it's an option. <laughs> Taking 15 is an option. It is an ugly option. Our opponent will take 15. <laughs> and I'm going to let that go ahead and go through. I'm going to hold up the mana to either crack clues or add a counter to my Ballista based on what happens here. An aura could obviously slip onto this 4-6 and make a very big creature. I guess that's about the worst thing he could do aside from tragic arrogance. Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Weirdness of that matter. Okay, our opponent has gone with double McKindy Patrol. Hmm. Many chumps. Many chumps. And he can get in with the 4 6. That will get him a 3 2 Eldrazi Scion. Here comes. No, maybe not. Alright. Um, I don't think there's anything I can draw, but... If our opponent has fog, they tapped out again. They're not holding the fog up. It's a, it's a crucial, crucial misplay in the Xbox meta. <laughs> you gotta hold the fog up. <laughs> Alright, Ballista number two might be good enough. Even despite all the blockers our opponent is generating. Looks like it will be. They did play two spells, which means we get hey have to flip our howler back. And we got ten mana, so that'll do it. That will make uh, Ballista come down for five, and we already had one for one on the battlefield, so we only needed eight. But Gosh, you gotta love it when your mono green deck can have like a burn you out ending that doesn't involve a primal bellow. Burn, baby, burn. Walking ballista inferno. Target, target, target. <laughs> the only hope is that we beat the clock. The only hope is we beat the clock. We have to beat the clock. Get everything to target where we want it to go. It's one of the advantages of uh, iOS, which I do also like to play on, is that the, the touch screen allows this whole thing to be a lot simpler than a controller. But it's, it works. It's good enough. It's good enough. And let's uh, see what happens now. Oh! 15 green or red spells in versus battles. Yes! <laughs> what a great idea to play a green deck today. Let's see if we can rock one more. By the way, and this is Nighthawk, a uh, fun fact, they came out and said right-click removal was intentional on Steam. Did they say why? Did they say why they removed the ability to right-click? Do they have like bigger, better plans for the magic of right clicking? Is that is that what's up? It's a new feature. The the removal of ease of use is now a new feature. <laughs> I'm just curious what they would uh how they would how they would explain that is what I'm curious about. We've got a vampire, he's getting struck by lightning. He is Cobra Kai twenty. So we've got a villain. Uh, Nighthawk says, quote, more effort to spend on fixing the game in other areas. What? Oh, this hand's great. But what does that mean? Okay, so we're talking about the right-click removal, the, the removal of the ability to use the right-click mouse button on Steam, and it says, quote, more effort to spend on fixing the game in other areas. 
Okay. I don't know. I maybe they were spending too much time programming in what happens when you right click. I I just uh so I can't wait to see that time put to good use. Oh no. It's the um it's the president of the Xbox HOA, the Child of Night, the official mascot here of Magic Duels on Xbox. <laughs> all right, let's uh, ruin. It's too bad we drew Jotty right there, but it's all good. It'll be fine. <laughs> we'll set up next turn. Even if we don't draw land, we can Jotty and then ramp again and then ramp again and then do stuff. So I think we'll be okay. The man says that Arlen's emblem messed it up. Well, if there, if there's ever a reason to just scrap a card, an emblem has to be one. Like an Arlen emblem, emblem at that. It's got to be one of the rarest emblems you see. It's it's like up there with Kiora. It's just so rare to see an Arlen emblem. I can barely say it. Alrighty, cool. We do the ballista. We'll need that probably in this game. Our opponent is off to a life-linking start. More power to him. And... See, I didn't play my land for the turn, so I could put it out untapped, but just... No. Why? No reason. Wouldn't actually do anything, but it's good to know that there are tricks of that nature. Seven Shade. What's next? Can't fix matchmaking, so they just get rid of it? Suddenly, a single-player game? <laughs> If they made the single-player AI really good, I don't think people would complain very much. I wonder why we're not attacking with Liliana. Okay, so our opponent is going to use a pump spell to kill my Jotty. That is not a big deal to me. I am okay with that. It really doesn't hurt my feelings. We would we like the life gain there, but we don't. I don't think we're like in that bad of a situation where we have to have it. So if I go to six, I can play Ballista on three. That can take out Lily without flipping her. Do I care if she flips? It also sets me up for Nissa flip as soon as I want that. The other options are Druid of the Cowl, Ballista on one. I don't love... I mean, that might hold back... The Child of Night, if our opponent doesn't have another pump spell, but if they attack, I definitely don't block. Or I could, if I have the Ballista. It would flip his Lily. Would I care? Lily Ultimate would be really bad, though. And if my Ballista's dead, I can't stop it. Ugh. Um, I think I ramp here. I just have a lot more options after I do that. And all I'm taking is four, unless he throws down a, an aura that like an infernal scarring times two crack for eight yeah that would be bad <laughs> mm, bitter revelation that doesn't affect the board so I doubt he can draw cards bigger and stronger than mine so I'm perfectly happy with him having a bitter revelation right before slapping me around with his lifelink creatures so he doesn't take a grave digger that tells me that he kept a spell most likely uh, a Planeswalker like Liliana or Obnixilis would be the worst. Alright, there's a good draw. So we can go for you, we can play Lily and Flipper. That's the only way to get Forest though this turn, that's the awkward part. And then I think I just plus her. Hmm. We just want to keep the mana coming. So even if Lily dies, that's not a bad thing. We just want to keep as many lands coming as possible to get to the top. So, And to make uh, cards like this even more powerful. So we will go... We'll leave one open. No, there won't be... Never mind. We don't need to. I was going to say we want to be able to cast Thought Knot if we draw it, but we're not going to draw until after we've spent all the mana. What I really want to do here is hit another land off of Nissa Plus. I could make a 4-4. Four, four. But I think I just want to do everything I can to find more land. He's going to attack and kill Nyssa, and we're going to say say la vie. Boom. Got there. <laughs> Remember to draw what you need when you need it, everybody. 
Good turn, good turn. Good turn. Seven Shade! Have you guys played any Pia's Revolution plus Implements at all? It's a beautiful jank fest. I live for the jank. Yeah, man, I, I put up a video all about that that stuff, and it certainly is the janky jank. Oh, nice. We just got double Whisper of Emrakuld, and the Whispers took out our Ulamog. What a bummer. Now we'll have to draw Big Nissa. What a bummer indeed. And the Bone Splinters. Oh, my gosh, our opponent is bringing it. Oh, they are bringing it. <laughs> what a turn. What a turn for the for the opposition. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Nighthawk gets in with outplayed. <laughs> D-Man says get wrecked. Man, you just can't prepare for that. Oh, no. Don't make me also discard. Ah! <laughs> if only. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're going to have to come back. We got to come back. Oh my lord, what a what a what a savage beating. So I believe that this is a um let's see. Minus eight. So we gotta we're gonna have to take some action. There's no I have to go up. Making a four four just I don't think that's good enough. Gotta go up, gotta find things that matter. Now this is just gonna die. That's sad, but it is what it is. Alright. Let's bring it. <sighs> But hey, it's cool. We lose this way. I'm fine with that. That's a very... Our opponent certainly uh, brought it uh, with their black. I don't know what's going... No! <laughs> okay, now, now we've got trouble. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. No more life gain. <laughs> not only that, it's not optional. So I either have to drain myself for two, or I have to put a plus one, plus one counter on my opponent's creatures. <laughs> this is beautiful, really. I mean, what do we need here? We need Kozilek off the top? Is about, about the only thing? This is awesome. Like, this is the beating, this is the beating that all my haters have been waiting for. Ugh. Yep. <laughs> Not great. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have cracked that Evolving Wilds. Mm. Just hurts. Just kind of hurts. Now, I don't think there's a Flesh Bag in here. Let's see. He's got um, Foundry. So I also could draw a Rogue's Passage. That's another way out of this. That is a way out. Now, if he... Though, let's see. There aren't that many creatures on the battlefield, and he's empty-handed. He may not be able to take as much advantage of the Lily Emblem as he should? Okay, so I don't think we've lost the game. I think we're working on it. We're definitely not doing well. Um, okay, great. I can definitely deal with this. All right, let's token up. Let's, hmm, I guess we thin. So we drew a uh, tireless tracker into Evolving Wilds. That's nothing to get complaining about. And unfortunately, we did play our land for the turn, so we're counting on Reality Smasher. Reality Smasher is our out to the Nissa. That's not Reality Smasher. In fact, do we even want to play you? We'll just drain ourselves every time we play land. <laughs> but Nissa could make us discard it. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Oh my lord. Um, all right. So I likely can't get to Nissa or to Liliana. Turning this sideways means I'm going to take five. But I can put this in the way. I guess we want to make him chump. We want to get rid of those. Nope, I guess we'll just skip our attack step. <laughs> nice, I double pressed. Uh, I hit two buttons at the same time. Uh, but it was close anyway. It's not the worst misclick of my life. <laughs> Again, he is not in the best position to take advantage of this emblem. I have definitely seen 
people in better spots for this emblem. And he's not even attacking. Okay. Uh, what are you going to do? Double Liliana emblem me? Um, great. Let's go get it. I will put it into play tapped. I could bring it out untapped, but I'm going to make clues and I want to use them to draw that rogue's passage. It would be nice. <laughs> Gotta leave myself an option. Alright, let's, um... Hmm. I could keep growing Tracker. He's got infinite chump blocks, though. So let's get some counters on offshoot. So that's a good blocker. We're going to drain ourselves here from bringing the land into play because, you know, that's great. Because <laughs> that's what offshoot does now. That's like offshoot's job is to drain me for two. Let's draw some cards. And let's see what happens. YouTube secretly unsubscribed you from my channel, huh? Yeah, I wish that were news, but it's not. That's the, uh, all right, so more lands. So we've got some counters on you. Now I guess we can go for, like, the Rogue's Passage win and just keep buffing the heck out of this guy. Drain ourselves for one. Yay. Isn't magic great? Let's see if we can draw another land off the top. That'll that'll go over. Draw. <laughs> Man, this is the life. Okay, so if I attack him, he will block with this child knight. He'll gain two life and he'll get the child knight back. So there's no reason to attack. He can make me discard this evolving wilds, which is going to hurt, actually. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Another foundry. Just what he needed. Such a beating. Nope, no Rishkar's expertise. Nothing that impressive. Kozilek is, though. If you want to draw a bunch of cards, that would be the solution. We just got so worked. Did I Have I lost... Okay, I've only lost one Ballista, so a Ballista off the top would be really gorgeous. Nissa off the top. A uh, big Nissa that could uh, get back any card from my graveyard, that would be special. So, good stuff. Alright, that is garbage. <laughs> it's like a terrible draw in this spot. Woohoo! Doing it, man. Just doing it. <laughs> now we're gonna die to Thopters. A slow, pitiful, pitiful death. Against the jankiest, perfect combination of cards in the history of the world. What a what a whisper of Emrakul, too. I mean, when our opponent goes on to win there, there's your MVP. And I bet he took it with his bitter revelation that set up... Um, it absolutely set up Delirium perfectly. And he hit Walking Ballista, and he hit Ulamog with this card. Just... You can't... You can't... You can't prepare for that. You, you can't be ready. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> There's nowhere you can go. There's nothing you can turn to. No attacks. Okay, our opponent has decided to spare my life for the maximum embarrassment factor. That's what we're... Our opponent's going for max humiliation. This is our chance. This is our chance. We need Rogue's Passage. Pretty bad. We have an Ulvenwald Hydra that can find it. Nissa getting back Walking Ballista would also cure our Thopter issues. Getting back Ulamog would be clutch as long as our opponent doesn't find a way to kill it. Oh, boy. Uh, that means our opponent gets the keep what dies, so he can have this Jotty offshoot. It was just draining my life anyway. <laughs> yeah, the Tainted Remedy. <laughs> that's just... That's special. Like, like, if I can find a way, I'll kill myself. <laughs> to his Tainted Remedy if this game get, becomes unwinnable. Gravedigger for nothing. Oh, wait, there's something down there? What was down there? Okay. An aristocrat. Oh, combo. <laughs> now he can make, uh, like, a ridiculously large aristocrat with his Liliana emblem. This is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect. While I try to draw a From Beyond or a Kozilek or an Uvenwald Hydra or a Rogue's Passage off the top of the deck like a champ, Duskwatch Recruiter would be fine. Big Nissa would be fine. 
But, I mean, this is, like, pretty much as big as he wants it lifelinking creature, which makes my chances to race pretty bad. <laughs> but I don't know why. Our opponent is clearly going for max humiliation, and that's why they're not attacking me with Thopters anymore. I think that that's clear. Well, that's an absolute waste of a card. <laughs> that's that's terrible. <laughs> All right. See, uh, in case you're missing it, I can't even attack in because if he blocks it up with these vampires, he just they die, but they come back on end step under his control. Oh, <laughs> bye bye Ulamog. <laughs> bye bye Ulamog. What would what would uh, Mobius say? He'd say just hard countered at every turn. Hard countered at every step. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it, there it fucking is. Yeah, we had, we had to f bomb. We had to f bomb today. Well, I can I can guarantee you this: this ramp deck is getting retired. <laughs> right after this game, like it just there's no coming back. There's no coming back from this. There's no future. There's no future. Our opponent has worked us in at the absolute best way. Props to Cobra Kai. It's freaking Cobra Kai. You know, my name is Daniel, right? That's what it is. Like, I'm getting bullied. I'm getting bullied by Cobra Kai. Straight out of Karate Kid the movie. Daniel is in a lot of trouble. Mr. Miyagi hasn't taught me any karate. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just doomed. I'm just doomed here. <laughs> oh, there's that's the troll of trolls right there. That's that's oh that's it. That that is it. Oh man. <laughs> right on time. Now you can pull a card out of my opponent's hand. Kiai <laughs> Kiai indeed. Alright. <laughs> Your turn, opponent. Have another, gr you know, grease the wheels up a little bit more. Make this video a little longer. Show me what you can do. Yes! Yes, that's the card. That's the card right there. All right. Um, let's give you a druid. Oh, that's so clutch. That card is, that card with Liliana's emblem is a thing of absolute beauty. Absolute beauty. So I certainly punted this game. I don't know for sure that I was wrong. If I had played out the Ballista like a long time ago. Our opponent has no spot removal, so Ballista would just be destroying my opponent this whole time. I didn't. I didn't expect to get Whispers of Emrakuld and lose it. I just wasn't prepared for it, and it hit me. Hit me right in the face like a wrecking ball, and the whole game has really just been a consequence of that. There's been nothing else to it. Alright, let's see if we can top deck a land to drain ourselves out to Tainted Remedy, shall we? Let's go for the Kill ourself with Tainted Remedy play. Yeah, you get a Jotty. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> um, you can have a tracker now. Congratulations. <laughs> Come on, land off the top. Ubenwald Hydra off the top for the ultimate. In fact, make it the Rogue's Passage I needed to draw, please. Bring it. Let's go. Let's do this. Yes, get it back. Bring it all back. <laughs> Rub it all in. Go for max, max, max humiliation. That is how you do it. And, oh, oh, not, not good enough. Just now, now I can't, now I can't even properly uh, commit myself to death. <laughs> Let's see if our opponent figures out how to kill us from this position. What do you think of their chances? Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh no, this deck can't ever be played again. This deck cannot be played again. I'm sorry. It's dead. It's dead to me. <laughs> uh, it, it can't handle rank 4 vampires. It's, it's unacceptable. <laughs> this deck is absolutely dead to me. Now, that said, that said, I will probably build like a red green ramp deck or something of that nature. Hmm. Here he comes. Hmm. How do we want to... Let's see. We block here. And maybe if we block here and here, then we only take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. But our opponent could sack 
the block creatures to the aristocrat, which would pump the vampires, which would mean we'd take even... Oh, man, there's just... The more I look at this, I don't think there are actual good blocks. I, uh, I just don't know. I don't know. We could block over here. Or, or wait, hold on. Maybe we'll block over here? Mm, I don't know. How about up here? What do you think? We can, we can throw a block somewhere in this general direction. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we can't block the flyers. This is really bad. This is really bad. Yeah, gimmick man. Soak it in, man. Soak it in. This is this is just about everything I could ever eh, eh. <laughs> This is about as good as it gets. <laughs> no. How about over there? Uh eh, no. I think I will um uh, back out and maybe maybe if everything blocks the my tireless tracker, something different will happen. Nah, maybe we'll do something like this. I'm just letting you guys bask in it. Uh, like Nighthawk just said, the greatest loss you've ever watched. I agree. I agree. <laughs> now he's pausing me. <laughs> yep, get it. Get it with the aristocrat. This, this Cobra Kai, man. Somebody needs to put... Somebody put... Somebody needs to put the... Put an end to this Cobra Kai bullying me. <laughs> it's just not okay. It's just not okay. Mr. Miyagi, teach me some moves so I can drop kick this bully in the face. <laughs> oh, I lost. So close. <laughs> well, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I hope I think you can tell I enjoyed that. Ugh! It stings. It just stings. Yeah, get this guy a YouTube channel. Subscribe to him. There's some next level play going on there that I can't compete with. All right. <laughs> bravo, opponent, bravo. <laughs> oh, my lordy, lordy, lordy. All right. I I hope you enjoyed that. Dun, 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 d